Greetings from Dr. T. Sindhil Muran, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Information Technology. Kagathya Institute of Technology and Science, Swarangal. In this particular video lecture, we are going to discuss about the for loop in C language. How to use the for loop in C language? What is the use of for loop in C language that we are going to discuss in this video lecture? Week 5, Lecture 2, Classroom Discussion Topic 14. We are going to discuss about for loop in C programming language. After completion of this lecture, student will be able to write a C program. So using for loop concept. So for loop. For loop is another entry controlled loop. Okay. So we have two types of loop. One is entry control, another one is exit control. So entry control means first check the condition and enter into the loop. Exit means first execute the body, then check the condition. Okay. But there is more concise loop. More concise of for loop. So this is the syntax of the for loop. For open bracket and close bracket. Within the bracket, you can give three parts. One is initialization part. We have to declare the variable and initialize the value for the variable here. And second part, first part over now, how we can understand that using semicolon is the separator. Okay, so once you use the semicolon, then initialization is over. There is no restriction to how many values we are initializing for the variables. You can use more variable initialization here. Okay. So next test condition, you can check the condition. <laughs> like while loop and dual loop, you can check the condition here. The condition may be relational operators. Okay. Then here increment or decrement, not only increment. So increment or decrement operators. So this value will be proceed for the loop execute or not. It will be increment or decrement means this particular variable or factor will decide the loop will be executed or not. Okay. So example for initialization, I use one variable i equal to zero. I am assigning initial value is zero for i. This is initialization. Test condition i less than 10. Okay, so I'm checking this condition. What is the meaning of that? Till, till this condition fails, this loop will be executed. So I plus plus. <coughs> what is the meaning of that? I value is zero, it will start with zero. Then it will check this condition I less than 10. So now zero less than 10 condition true, then entered into the body of the loop. So same condition you have to use what we discussed in the white loop, like braces. So if more than one statement is there, you can use braces. Otherwise, you can use single statement. But the best practice is always you have to use the braces. Okay. So these are the body of the loop. So example, in this program, I'm using print of percentage D i value. I'm printing the i value. Till this condition fails, this statement will be executed. First initial value is 0. It will check the condition. 
So i plus plus. What is the i plus plus? End of this loop, the i value will be incremented. Let's suppose increment. Plus plus i means i value increment, then enter into the loop. Here. So here, post increment. So end of the loop, it will be incremented. So what is the i value? Zero. So it will print zero. Then i value will be incremented by one. So i equal to one. So one less than 10, it will say condition true, then enter into the loop. I value will be print one. Okay. So then I value will be incremented two. Then two will be print condition true. So then I value incremented three. So up to where less than 10. So up to nine, it will print. When the value incremented one, it is up to nine, the value is 10. So 10 less than 10 condition fails, then it will come out from the loop. Okay. This is a simple example for for loop. So what are the condition we have to do? Initialization of the control variables is done first using assignment statements such as i equal to one, count equal to zero. Like that, we can initialize the n number of values. So, initialization I used in the previous example i equal to zero. Okay. So, we can initialize comma j equal to one. So, how I am saying that for initialization i equal to zero, j equal to one, k equal to two, semicolon. So, till this point, initialization will be there. Okay, so there is no restriction to initialize the variables. Okay, <clears throat> then second one is it is the test condition is there that is a relational expressions. We know that what are the relational operators is there, then how the expression will be less than less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, or equal to, these conditions we will say. Okay, this condition true, the body of the loop will be executed. Otherwise, loop is terminated. Okay. So when the body of the loop is executed, what will happen? The control is transferred back to the first statement. When? So, body of the loop executed, then it will check increment or decrement operator. That variable will check again. The control will comes to the first statement. Again, it will check the condition. For example, we are using i means i plus 1. The value will be incremented. With that value, it will check the expression. The expression true means again the body will be executed. If condition, till condition fails, the statement will be executed again and again. Okay. So example see here. Negative increments. That means it will reduce the values. First see this example. Initial value is x equal to 9. Initialization means any value you can assign. Initial value. That is not 0. That is not 1. Whatever you want, you can give. Okay. So here, this particular example is used to print 9 to 0. How it will work? So first initial value 9. 9 greater than or equal to 0, condition true. Then body of the loop will be executed. X will be print. 9 will be print. Then next line it will come. Then x value is x minus 1. That is decrement operator. x minus minus you can use. Or x equal to x minus 1 you can use. Then the value x minus 1 is 8. So 8 it will print. So 7 it will print again. x minus 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So after 0, again it is minus 1 now, so minus 1. Minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, condition fail. Then it will come out from the loop. 
clear <coughs> here i already told for loop is there if more than one statement is there you can use braces then only these two statement will be executed otherwise only this statement will be executed this statement will be executed end of the loop okay so if you are using the same statement 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 0 it will print then cursor will comes to next line if you are using braces it will print the values 9 8 7 6 like that one by one it will print just to remind it okay So there is a condition always should be the true, not like that. Initialization value submit sometimes may be correct or condition may be. So see here example, this example, initial value is 9. The condition 9 less than 9. There is no restriction to if at least once it is true, not like that. It may be failed. No need to execute the body of the loop. Okay. This may be happened. Okay. In for loop. Clearly, with your idea, you can implement this for loop. If we want to find the square of the n numbers, how we can write the program? See, the initial value is there, sum equal to zero. So, for loop I am using initial value equal to one. I am checking the condition up to ten value. N value up to ten. If more than ten means the condition will be getting failure, the loop will not be executed. Then here n plus plus you can use or instead of that n equal to n plus 1 you can use. So what happened that last time how we are explained same. Okay n value is 1. 1 into 1, 1. That will be stored in sum. So I value n value incremented 2. So it will 2 into 2. 4 that will be add with already 1 is there 1 plus 4 5. 5 will be stored in sum. Okay. 1, 1, 1 into 1, 1, 1 is stored, then 1 value. Again, n value incremented 2, 2 into 2, 4. So 4, already 1 is there, 4 plus 1, 5. So now sum value is 5. So now n value is incremented by 1. So now 3, 3 into 3, 9. Okay. Already 5 is there. 5 plus 9, 14. So 14 will be stored in sum. Okay. Like that, it will add all the value up to 10. Then end up the loop. When the values are crossed to the 10, the condition is failed. If it is 11, means the condition is failed. Okay. So up to 10, it will calculate. Then it will print the sum value. You see that same situation. So how we can use these three type of loop, for loops. Initial value n equal to 1. In loop itself, loop statement itself we are given. But while loop and dual loop we are declared initially n equal to 1. Conditions. We are given in the for loop. Same condition. But while loop it will check the condition. But dual loop it is end of the loop it is given. Okay. Then increment operator plus plus n or n plus plus whatever it may be. So that will be inside body of the loop will be there. Okay. So this is the relationship between the for while do while loop. Okay. So for loop with the help of for loop how we can write the program. So simply we can write the program to print uh, 200 to 
199. Like the reverse order, I'm saying 200, 199, 198. I want to print up to 99. How to write the for loop? So I have to use i equal to. Okay, so for loop i equal to 200. It's the initial value. Okay, so what I have to set? Till 99, it should be there. So i value is greater than or equal to 99. Okay, equal symbol should be there, 99. So what we have to use? I minus minus. It will reduce one value. So print up. Percentage D because I is the integer value. Okay, here yeah, I. So simple statement, you can print. 200 to 99. This is a use of for loop. Okay. <coughs> so now with the use of for loop, how we can find the Fibonacci series? We will see the step by step program. Okay. So first include the header files. You know, console input output. Then main function, we know that open brace. Then we have to declare to the what, what is Fibonacci series? Any idea? So the first value is zero, second value is one. So these two will be added and that is the next term. Zero plus one, one. So these two terms will be added, that is the next term, one plus one, two. Then these two terms will be added. Then that is the next term. 1 plus 2, 3. So these two terms will be added. The next term is 5. Then next term is 8. Clear? Like this it will go. This is the Fibonacci series. The first value I 0. Number 1 is 0. I declare. Number 2 is 1. So declare. Then we need some values. We can see series. We have to print n value and i value is we can use variables. Okay. Enter the value of n. That means how many values you want in Fibonacci series. That we have to give. That we will take it n values. So what happened? I value start from 1 i less than or equal to n minus 2. Why n minus 2? Already two values we know. 0 and 1 is compulsory. Okay. So up to that number. So 10 numbers we need means you have to find 8 numbers in the loop. Because first two numbers we know. That's why we are using n minus 2 here. Okay. So what is the Fibonacci series? First number and second number will be added. That is the third number. That is the Fibonacci series. Okay. So after assigning the Fibonacci value, what we have to do? Second number will be the first number. Then the next number is the number two number. Summation of this number will be the next number. So that will be assigned to number two. Okay, so this will be continuously in there. Then we have to print the Fibonacci variable. So what is this value? The nth Fibonacci number is, we are finding that one. Okay, so each Fibonacci value you can print means here you can print the Fibonacci value. Here, print the percentage D, tip. If you are given, you can print the value continuously. Finally, the sum nth value will be printed here. So this get CH function and clear screen function may be used for clearing the screens 
are getting input, the output will be shown. For that purpose, we are using. So for using those two functions, we must be use console input output header file. Okay. So now, additional features of for loop. More than one variable can be initialized at the time of our statement. We can initialize more variables. Increment section may also have more than one part. I plus plus, J plus plus, K plus plus, like that we can give in the increment or decrement part. The third feature is test condition may have one compound relation that testing need not be limited, only the loop control variable. Okay, so testing condition you can give as per requirements. It's also permissible to use expression the assignment statements of initialization and increment section. We can use any expression, not only value. We can use the expression value for increment and decrement as well as initialization. So it is perfectly valid. Another unique aspect of loop statement is more section may be omitted. That is not mandatory. So if you see this example, there is no instantiation, there is no increment decrement operator. Simply it will check the condition. You can write the for loop like this also. So if you are using this for loop semicolon. Semicolon means it is infinity loop. Okay. This statement will be continuously executed. Clear. Then here m not equal to 100, that condition will be there. m value is print 5, then m plus 5, 10 m equal to 10, m 10 not equal to 100, yes, it will be executed, 10 will be print, 10 plus 5, 15, so up to what number it will come, 100, so 105 when it is comes, the condition will be getting failure, okay, this is the for loop, so there is, we can set for time delay operation is there, not the time, we can use this for loop. If using semicolon, end of the for loop, we are using semicolon means this loop will be executed thousand times, but it won't produce any output. Okay. So for time delay concept, they are using this for loop with the semicolon. Normally in for loop, don't use the semicolon. If you are using semicolon, end of the for loop, the meaning that it won't execute any statement, but the time will be there. So it will start from the thousand. J value will be decremented by one thousand nine triple nine 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 eight nine nine seven. So still zero. This loop will be executed. Okay. If there is a semicolon, is there means it's a null statement. So if you are given there is no semicolon here, what is the meaning of that? It implies that C compiler will not give an error message if you place a semicolon by mistake at the end of the spark statement. The semicolon will be considered as a null statement. And the program may produce some nonsense. Okay. So now I hope you are enjoyed the session. How we can use the power loop, why we are using the power loop, and what is the advantages of power loop. Comparison between for loop and while and dual loop. So these are the things we are discussed in this video. So in lecture outcome revisited.
having completed this discussion on for loop in C language, now you are the students. The students should be able to write a C program using for loop. Now we have the capability to write the C program with the help of for loop. Okay. So this is the lecture level problems. You can print the number between 550 to 620 using for loop. Okay. So then nested for loop you can use to print multiplication tables. This we can discuss in the next video with writing the multiplication table with the help of nested for loop. I hope you are enjoyed this video. If you have doubt, please refer the textbook. Programming in NCC, authored by E. Balaguru Swami sir. In chapter 6, even if you have doubt, you please check weekly tutorial sheet. Even if you have doubt, please comment, ask queries in classroom discussion. Thank you very much for listening to this video.